Hello all, I am still Phil Brown with NextGen Cam. Today we're going to go over component pattern. As you can see to my left, I have both a fourth axis as well as maybe a bar of material for running. Um, same part replicated multiple instances. However, component pattern is going to allow me to very fast and efficiently program all of these parts with absolute minimal effort. So let's go ahead and jump in and see how this is done. As you can see, we're now inside my Fusion 360. That being said, the most important part of component pattern is making sure that you have components. So how do we make components or how do we check for components? Well, the first thing we could see here is this very top level of this part is the component itself. However, we want to create this body into a component and then we're gonna pattern it or copy and paste it based on our arrangement. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna right click on my body and I'm going to create component from body. And as you can see, it converts that body into its own individual component. As well, we have up here at the top, we now are looking at what looks like a little Tetris block because it's actually changed our main and top level into an assembly. So now that we have our component, we can go ahead and utilize pattern, control C, control V for copy paste. It's really up to you. The key element here is going to be is we want to pattern on path or if you're trying to rectangular pattern we're going to go ahead and pick our object and we want that to be a component so you don't want to pattern a face or a body we again we're going with the components here and in this case i'm going to go ahead and pick that outside axis in this case i picked the wrong axis i'm going to go ahead and hold alt hopefully i can grab just an individual chain it does not look like that so let's go back and let's just do rectangular pattern to make our life easy and pick our axis. So the reason why that was happening is, is because it was grabbing the entire chain around my part. So I'm gonna drag these out to whatever spacing you plan to go with. I'm just doing this very generic to start with because I can always come back and revisit the idea that these are gonna be spaced out based on maybe my end mill selection and things of that nature. So let's jump over to the manufacturer workspace. So in the manufacturer workspace, I can now go through and create my setups and everything to make my parts. So I'm going to start by creating my setup. In this case, I need to make sure my models are turned on. So that's why you didn't see those. They were actually turned off. And again, normally I would care about stock, but we're kind of doing this very fast and in a hurry so that we can get the point across on what we're doing. So let's go ahead and just say our stock width is going to be 2.25. And then based on that, we're gonna go ahead and select all three of our models. One neat trick here is if you guys see, I had to go through and manually select each one, you can actually pick them out of my design tree as well. So if I hold shift, pick my first and last, it will grab all of them automatically as well. So now that I have them patterned and I actually went ahead and created my setup, we haven't done the actual manufacturing component pattern, but let's just give this a couple of tool passes if we were really going to make it. So let's go ahead and start with something like a facing operation. And we're going to go ahead and select our tool. In this case, I'm just going to use a two inch shell mill, nothing too crazy. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to use 3D adaptive clearing to rough everything out. So again, as you can see, my stock is already defined. I'm going to go ahead and swap out to maybe a half inch end mill. And let's go ahead and do some aluminum roughing here. So that being said, you can now see that we have plenty of room to get our tool between our part. We're roughing everything out as we go. We can now get into the idea of let's just program one part and replicate that across everything, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually start by creating my pattern. So we're going to go to setup new pattern. And we're going to, just like before you saw pattern online where that, or pattern on path that didn't quite work, we're going to go ahead and go to component pattern and pick our first component that we want to work with. One key element here is, is we patterned everything to the left. So this is our original model over on the right. I would highly recommend always trying to use your original model so that it automatically selects everything else. One also neat feature you'll see here is I'm not going to select any targets because it's going to go find those automatically as we're manufacturing so again we have our component picked out we have our pattern set in this case i don't want my adaptive clearing in there so let's go ahead and drag out our adaptive clearing and give it a refresh but i'm going to now activate the pattern and let's start with something simple like a 2d contour 
And in the case of this 2D contour, your customer was hoping for extremely close and precision. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our wear feature as well. And just like that, we went ahead and cut the outside of that first part. So we can continue this through. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do drilling. Now, and you're going to see a couple of examples where we may or may not want to pattern our toolpath. Again, selecting same size diameter is going down my part completely. So that may be a toolpath that I don't want to do. Another couple of things here that I'm going to add is let's go in and say we were going to do an inspection procedure and we wanted to probe this part and pull dimensions from it. So again, I may not want to probe every single one to adjust my wear. I just want to probe one and be done. So let's go ahead and jump back to our paths now. So we do have two paths here, as you can see, one and two. And if we look at our pattern, it gets a little hectic and a little crazy because it's almost going the wrong way based on our selections. So this may be a mistake that I made. Let's investigate. So the pattern seems to be off and it looks like I want to do this original part. However, I tool path the wrong part. So this is something that you always have to keep in mind is we want to make sure that we're pulling the same pet actual part that we are pathing. So I'm going to go back to that right part in case my pattern changes. We're going to go in and we're going to change the chain here. We're going to move that back down to the bottom one. And then lastly, let's go to our drilling cycle. So as you can see, our drilling cycle is hitting all of our parts. So we're actually going to change that to our first part again. And then what I could do is I can give this a containment boundary and limit where it's going. So one neat thing is, is based on how we're doing this, is I'm going to do the outside, then I'm going to do the holes. That does allow me to pattern that fast and efficient across all these parts. So again, is based on a couple of different scenarios here. I could finish one part with the same tool consistently and jump to the next one, or I could just run down all of them very fast. It just depends on the speed of my machine and my method. So one thing that I didn't discuss here is looking at the component pattern is I do have the ability to either preserve order and what that's going to do is it's basically going to run down the list, right? So if we look here, it's going to do the contour, tool change, do our spot drilling. Well, I may not want to do that. That's inefficient. I may want to do it in the event that I want to finish a full part before moving to the next one. But again, not very inefficient when we are not very efficient when we're actually making our parts. So the next thing would be is order by operation. That means order by operation, we don't have a third tool path, but the idea is, is we're just gonna contour, 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 drill, 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 so forth and so on down our list. So it's not gonna actually group things together by what we would call order by tool. So to think about this a little better, let's go ahead and throw another tool path in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a horizontal tool path. Actually, that's not going to work too good because it's going to recognize everything and anything. So let's say we're going to use a pocket tool path to clean up our floors, right? So here's my chain. We want to go all the way down to the bottom of this pocket. And again, we're still using the same tool here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off stock to leave for our floors. So again, let's go ahead and drag this up and look at this. So again, the idea is, is based on order by operation, it would contour, 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 and then it would come back and do pocket, pocket, pocket. Now order by tool, it's going to contour, pocket, contour, pocket, contour, pocket. So hopefully that's a little bit more explanatory to what you're doing. Um, again, there's a lot of different ways that you would or wouldn't want to do this. I would probably put my drilling outside of my actual setup here and not use that containment boundary unless I have to. And the reason for that is, is it's much less selections. As you can see, it very quickly can go down and find all those holes for me. And that can be used to my advantage. So again, this is a neat thing because if we ever go back to our design and say we actually want to pattern out four of these. So let's go ahead and open up my pattern. And let's say we actually want to go to four based on what we're doing. And I'm actually going to space these. So in this case, I'm doing this by distance versus spacing. Again, Sometimes you make mistakes. It's always easy to fix after the fact. And let's put this back to a round number of like 3.625 and hit OK. So when we go back to the manufacturer side of things, what you're going to notice is when I hit regenerate, it's going to go through and actually pick up on all those things. The only thing I need to do is add in that fourth component 
and have my stock adjusted so that my tool paths that are driven off the stock, like my facing, my actual roughing tool path, again, we screwed up a little bit here, so we didn't space enough for that pocket to get cleared out. However, it did pick up on all of my patterning for all of my tool paths down my part and cleaning everything and anything up. So again, I failed to change this pocket earlier, so let's go in. Full of mistakes this morning. It's a Friday. I'm partially already checked out mentally, possibly. Let's get this fixed here so that we can see the real benefits of that pattern. So again, we have our pattern set. We can pattern it down our part. It can go through and pick all of our enclosures based off that pattern. And we have that set to go. So let's jump over to our tombstone here now. So I don't have my setup yet. Let's walk through that setup. We're going to start very simply just with one part. I'm going to define my Z and my X. So let's just go Z up. In this case, X would go down the center. And this is kind of if we had DFO, not a big ordeal. So we're just doing one part and we're going to go ahead and excuse that awesome reminder that came up. We're going to go ahead and start the same way. Let's go ahead and face this guy off. We're going to give it a two inch shell mill. In this case, I have one in that machine. And then from there, we're going to go and fix that because that will drive me crazy if it's not set to 90 degrees based on our machining directions. There we go. We're coming across the part and we don't have to worry about hitting the other one. But let's just do 2D adaptive clearing and rough out the inside of that enclosure, right? Maybe in this case, as you've seen my other videos, we've already done the backside of these. These are just in here to be held. Good thing the software is smart and intelligent, telling me I can't put a two inch shell mill into that hole. So again, we're going to go back. We're going to grab our half inch flat and utilize our half inch flat. So again, as you can see, we're starting to go through and create all these processes. So again, I'm going to do a drilling cycle because I think the drilling cycle really shows the power of how this works based on what you define in your setup. So this time when we say select same size, you're going to notice it only sticks to this one part. It's not actually replicating it to my other part. And the reason why that is, is because there's only stock and this model defined at the end of the day. So again, is if I take my roughing of that pocket, my drilling cycle, I go to the top, I'm going to go ahead and say new pattern. We're going to say circular pattern. No, I'm going to do a component pattern. So we pick our source and just like that, it went through and it found all of those parts around my tombstone to be manufactured. So again, this is going to work out very, very well. If you're like me and you've done replicated parts and you've had to select chains over and over again, we actually now have the ability to use component pattern to go in and pick those components and set those patterns automatically. I know somebody's going to ask the question, well, what happens if we're doing fourth axis within there? It doesn't matter at the end of the day. And that's the great thing about this is even your tool orientation for a separate fourth axis move inside of the actual file or the path is going to be recognized in that pattern as well. So as you're seeing here, again, I'm just drilling the end of my part and my pattern is recognizing that as drilling the end of every part all the way around. So I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to see more content like this. Leave a comment down below of any other content you would like us to cover. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, we have our CAD mouse giveaway that we'll be giving away at the end of the month. Don't forget to go ahead and sign up today using the link down below in the description. And again, we're going to be drawing those names at the end of the month. Best of luck to everybody.